That's a tricky little pin, isn't it? Tucked front edge, straight downwind. Good job I've got new wedges. How good do these tailor-made high toe threes look? I love the untraditional shaping of the high toe. I think it's really confidence inspiring behind the ball and gives you almost like that feel of a game improvement club with the workability of a player's club. Now that's kind of key because the whole story here is about versatility. We've got the four way cambered sole on the bottom of this, which is iconic and has come in every single edition of this. And the idea is you can have that wider sole that is slightly more forgiving, but you still get low bounce, which is really workable. So you can hit a lot of shots from tight lies and loads of different scenarios around the green, which is really key to having a great short game. Having wedges with low bounds is something that I really like in my bag because it gives you so many shot types and so much ability to kind of do what you want with these clubs. So we're gonna test these out from a variety of different situations and see just how versatile they are. Let's start in the bunker because I like bunkers. Now, I've actually got this in a 60 degree, which kind of feels like cheating. <laughs> I only ever normally use a 58. It's quite interesting. Someone sent me a 72 degree wedge that they found on Twitter the other day. And I was like, surely that's too much loft. I don't know. Would you actually use that much? What is your highest lofted wedge? Now in these short sided situations, having a lot of loft is going to help, but also having something that you can open the face up with is key. So for me, having that low bounce is really a lot more confidence inspiring over the ball because you're not looking at the bottom of the face thinking, I'm going to thin this off the bottom of the sole. I mean, I still might, but at least it doesn't feel like I'm going to. It sits so good behind the ball. Now, obviously that's quite a fluffy lie. So generally the ball is going to sit up a bit, so it's going to be a bit easier. So let's see what it's like off this firmer sand. Now it's interesting because in the higher lofts here, we have grooves that go all the way up the face and all the way across. I really like the way that looks behind the ball. Also helps, you know, if you catch it out the toe, maybe a little bit more spin. That came off so good. I can't get over how nice that sits like just on the compact sand. Because for a lot of people, you just hate that shot. You know, where the, the front of the club sits up above the level of the sand behind the ball, you feel like you're going to thin it. There isn't that feeling with this. It sits really nicely because of the way that sole is designed. Oh, I could sit and hit bunker shots with this all day. It's nice to see how far they've come with kind of the grinds and the soles of these because I had the first generation of these in play and the 58 had quite a lot of depth and balance on the sole. Now, this is still a 10, but the way it's cambered just means it sits so well behind the ball. It's not always been like that. With my previous version, I did actually grind the sole down to get it more like this shape. So. It is nice that they've kind of talked to tour players, asked what they want, and got something that sits really crisply behind the ball. <sighs> oh, I was holding my breath in for some reason. If you look at some 50 yard shots, it's kind of that awkward distance where it's like not a full shot, but you need to be able to get enough control of it. <sighs> no idea what to use here. I normally use 58, 52, 46. I've got a 60, a 56, and a 52. So these could go any distance. Downwind, let's try a 60. Felt nice. Now, the nice thing about these is because we've got that kind of nice grind on the sole that allows them to sit nicely, you can still have a bit more bounce and having more bounce on those longer shots is going to bring the ball flat down a little bit. So even though we've got a lot of loft here, it actually is pretty controllable. And now I've not seen really that mix of like a really nicely shaped grind with high bounce before. It's quite interesting. It's a bit diggy, wasn't it? Still a nice ball flight though. Just digging half the practice ground up. It's funny because that's kind of like the ball flight I would expect with my 58, even though this is a 60. So having that more bounce is really kind of bringing the flight down nicely. I think the way they've centered the weight and the CG here gives you actually quite a controlled ball flight. 
for, relative to the loft for this kind of length of shot which is real key especially if you're playing in windy conditions because you're not going to get that ball that like balloons up into the wind and just doesn't go anywhere now from 54 up you get the full face grooves which i really like but then the lofts under that you'd get that more traditional so just the grooves in the middle of the face and i get it it does look nice and i guess you're going to play more full shots with these so it will look nice over the ball but i kind of just wish they'd done it all the same because i think this is a statement it looks different and it looks really cool so why not just run that throughout the whole set okay this is burnt out so we're gonna see how that soul's working here let's go for some different loft let's go like 56. this is burnt out so it definitely gives you that feeling of a nice tight lie and seeing how the club would sit from that That sits so nicely. I'm honestly quite picky with how I have my wedges and it can be really hard to find something that sits just how you want it with kind of the right bounce and the right flight. But these seem really impressive throughout, which is very interesting. <laughs> Might have expected them to spin a little bit more though, given we've got grooves, micro grooves, very dry and burnt out grass. I mean, that did check up nicely, but the spin wasn't excessive, especially for fresh grooves. I mean, I caught that one heavy, so it was never gonna spin. It is nice and controlled. I'm just not sure if you'd get that really super zippy shot. Oh, you're still on. <laughs> Is that one of my balls down there? No. no. I was gonna say. Been thinning them. I mean, that grouping's pretty good. Now, versatility isn't always about just that kind of high lofted shot. I think when people think of versatile soil grinds, they're thinking about, can I open the face up in the bunker? Can I hit a flop shot? But I like to close the face down a lot as well and kind of trap some pitches. So we'll see how that works here. Yeah, nice. The spin control was exactly how I would have wanted that as well. It was really nice, kind of one bound, start spinning, check up. Lovely. Get in. I mean, other than the fact that they're completely wrong lofts and the shafts are 20 grams heavier than I'd use. Yeah, I'd put them in play other than that. <laughs> Nice. Genuinely, I have no idea what to use for a short chip here. 60, 56, 50, let's try 56. We haven't used it yet. Nice controlled flight. Some people might wonder why I'm chipping this. Like, I feel like lots of people would put from here, but I just love chipping, so chip at all costs. Well, I mean, it is a wedge review to be fair, so if I started putting, that would be a bit out there. That would have been perfect if it was a 58. Ooh. Ugh. These are wicked. That's it. I'm off to ring TaylorMade. I need some of these in my specs. Hello TaylorMade. 